starting a new vlog. <laughs> this is a school, my first school ever. This playground is only half the size it was now. They used to separate us. The girls would be right about there where that fence is and the boys would be up here where the parking lot is now. But we didn't have all those toys. You know, if we were lucky, they gave us a ball. But uh, the school was called Rose School. And it was elementary, my dear Watson. And um, this school, you know, everybody was so close-knit. Uh, the first... I don't know, 10 years of my life. Um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts were here. Um, everything. Uh, PTA was done here. They even still have the name of the school. The signpost on the side. Oh, no parking. First Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? No, it's Tuesday. I'm good. Hold on. I'm okay. There. <laughs> uh, right there, it, it actually says public library. Um, uh, and I think it was all this lower area right here. And on the second floor right there, that was my... That was my room for the majority of the time. But look, it says it. John G. Rowe School. I wonder who that was. Hmm. Hold on. Okay. I don't think these stairs have been worked on in since I was here. And I'm 50 and I went here. I stopped going here I think when I was 12. That's nice. Um, but look at this. This, what is it? A rail something. This is where all the kids sat on their uh, lunch break because we all got recesses. You know, I'm not going to go up here because I feel like I'm going to fall. Hold on. Okay. I was going to go up and show you this, but no, I'm not going to. But, um, oh God, I'm you know, learn your limits, didn't you know? Okay, I'm going to show you one more thing. Well, two more things. Right here, on this corner where this greenery is, this was a place, there was a building here called Harrison's. And it was run by Mrs. Harrison. Right there. And... You could go over there and get penny candy, candy on your day or on your lunch hour. And uh, when I was a kid, we would go around the neighborhood and find all the bottles. And back then, you turned them in for two cents. And I would bring them here. And she would be like, Did you, you didn't buy this. You didn't buy this. You found this. And be like, it doesn't matter. You, this is what you're supposed to get for it. And um, she'd be like, I'm only giving you a penny. You didn't buy this. Or she'd be like, well, you didn't buy it here. So you're only getting a penny. Now, mind you, I got two pennies. But she would get four. <laughs> and, uh, you know, come on. It's bad enough you're trying to, you're collecting bottles for pennies. Do not chase, lost dog. I hope they found him. But she was just an evil woman. I, it wasn't until years later I realized that uh, she did that with everybody. Okay, hold on. Okay, last story. I'm going to tell this story about a friend of mine. The first kid I knew who passed away. Um, I was 12. He was 16. He was somebody everybody knew, everybody loved. 
Um, in the summer of 78, in our area, you had to be home when the street lights went on. And in the summer of 78, all of a sudden, the street lights weren't going on. Oh my god, I just realized something. All these houses right here. These are all new. These are all new houses. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five, five new houses. People have been putting money into my old neighborhood. Um, the street lights were not going on. They would flick on and then flick off. And the rule was you came home when the street lights went on. And the, I remember the first night, but mom, the street lights aren't on. You know it's too dark for you to be outside. That's what she yelled at me. So be like, okay. So the next night, street lights did not come on. And it rained a lot that summer. And it happened all summer into fall, into October. And the reason I found out why I, um, it, my brother Jack, my brother Glenn, my friends John Goodman, Donnie Goodman, who was the other good one? Boy, there was another one. Um, Mike Terrini, his buddy, I forget his name. But it was like a group of five or six guys who were turning off the street lights. And I'm going to show you how. Okay. You see that right there? That what looks like a trash can? I don't know if it's the same thing. I don't know if it's still active. It looks different from when I was a kid. And it... Yeah, definitely different. But, uh... It's a different container. I know it for sure now. The one as a kid was bigger. There used to be a light up there. Alright? And... What was going, it, they called it a hot box. And this was one of the main lights. Like that street light over there. It was the main one over here. They would climb this pole, stand on that box, and shine the uh, flashlight directly into it. Just as it was turning, uh, the lights were turning on. And when you did that, all the lights in the neighborhood would turn off. Well, it was a very rainy, it was a very rainy, uh, October. I think this was around the, I think it was the 18th. And nobody would do it. And Mike said, I'm doing it. So he climbed up there. And he fell. He, you know, he got hit by lightning. He was electrocuted. And he fell on this fence. He fell on the fence right below, broke his back, and uh, he died. He was the first kid I knew who died, 16 years old. Uh, first a funeral I went to since my father's funeral. And when my father died, well, I didn't even know why I was there. I was like, why are we here looking at this box? Because they didn't let the kids see our father in the box so I was like freaked out he was a really good guy you knew well I believe he would have been a great adult he would have done something with his life but uh, he was the youngest of, I think five kids. I know he had an older sister and an older brother and I'm thinking there were two others But he was the youngest. I don't even remember the sister but uh, He lived on the street where I parked my car and uh, You know he had it easy he could walk to school 
and be he can leave late and get there on time but he was around 12 years old and uh, he knew how to drive and he would leave you know they let us go outside for lunch he went home for lunch because it was right next door and uh, he would instead of he might have a sandwich or whatever and then he would get his mom's car he lived they lived on the bus line bus picked his mom up for work right in front of their house so she left the car and uh so speaking of cars somebody's by mine okay um And the neighbors were like, and, you know, we would see him drive by. I'm like, he's a kid. You know, I was eight and I knew that was wrong. But uh, he would drive by the playground in the car. And he would ask everybody, hey, want to go for a ride in the car? And no. Um, and the, But the neighbors... His neighbors told his mom, hey, your son is taking the car while you're at work. And she's like, no, he's not doing that. Yeah, yeah, he is. So they kept telling him, and she kept her keys on a uh, hook right by the door. <clears throat> you could do that back then. And... So she left, you know, got ready for work one day. Says, see you later. He's like, bye. And, uh, while he went to school, she came back. She took the day off from work. And when it was close to lunchtime, she hid in a closet right across. And, you know, waited for him to come in and she's like okay and she heard him you know make a sandwich eat the sandwich have something to drink and then she heard keys <laughs> and she's like okay he's he's just getting something out of the car he's not going to start it and then she hears the car start and uh She, she's like, okay, well, he's just going to sit in it or bring it up and down the driveway. I wish I remembered which house was his. And uh, he got in the car and he drove it and brought it back like 15 minutes later. And... Uh, She tore into him. <laughs> she actually grounded her favorite. Uh, he was such a practical joker. God love him. We have like 20 pictures of his butt. Because he was a Boy Scout. And whenever anybody pulled out a camera, he mooned them. <laughs> and they took the picture. And back then, they were developed... <laughs> Uh, but she was like, she couldn't believe he did that. Um, he, I remember, he, uh, everybody gathered at our house for, uh, we we're going to play softball. Right up here at Franz, this is Franz Park. And right down at the lower level over there is a baseball field. There's two of them, actually. And uh, everybody, you know, even though he lived up here right next to the park, he walked down with Jimmy. That's what his best friend's name was. He walked down here, down to our house with Jimmy. And uh, they were all, everybody gathered. There was like 10 kids on our front yard. And he looked at me and said, Hey, Gia, 
Give me a glass of water. I said, my name ain't Gia. <clears throat> and he looked at my brother Jack. And Jack goes, yeah, man. That's my other sister. Where is... They're gone. No, okay. Um, I thought I lost my lottery tickets. And I have money in there. Along with a debit card. Um... He goes, yeah, man, that's my other sister, Danina. And he goes, and he goes, Danina, please give me some water. And I'm like, shut up. There's a hose around the side of the house. And uh, he's like, I don't want a hose. I want water. And I'm like, shut up. And ever since then, he harassed me. I would kill for him to harass me now. But, you know, I tell you, I was always the last person picked for a team because I was the smallest. I think I was, this is when I was 11. And uh, he picked me over my brother, Glenn. He put me in left field. <laughs> but he still picked me. All right, so this is the end of my vlogging for the day hope you enjoyed it uh i will see you in the next video take care